back, everybody. You know, uh, over the last couple of years of doing YouTube videos, I've gotten to know a couple of the people, a couple of my favorite guys that I watch, kind of small do-it-yourselfers like me. And a couple of us have gotten together, you may have seen in the past, and done a couple collaboration videos. Every once in a while, we just kind of rotate around and ask a question, and then that person shoots a video on it, takes inputs from others, kind of puts them all together and puts them out. So, I asked a question this time, hey, if there was one tool in your toolbox, in your shop, in your garage, that really came invaluable, helped you out a lot, and that you really couldn't replace with another tool, you know, what would it be? So, I've got Mike from Mike Restimations, Tom from Garage Time, and Russell from Double R Restorations, and those guys are going to tell you what they've got, and then wrapping it up, I got my own. So first up, we'll start with Mike from Mike Restorations. Take it away, Mike. Thanks, Chris. Hey guys, my name is Mike, and the name of our channel is Mike's Restorations. Over here, we're restoring a 1967 Porsche 911, and have been doing so now for about four years. Let's take a quick peek outside, take a look at the car, and then I'll share with you what my favorite tool is. So this is our project over here, and this is what four years looks like in about five seconds. So the question of the day is, what is my favorite tool, or what is my most useful tool in my toolbox? That's a good question, because I've got a lot of tools. <laughs> uh, for me, it's going to be the shop manual. Uh, this is my, my default secret weapon. Without this guy, none of that would happen out there. Um, literally has carried me from day one. Uh, well, you can see my engine in the background here. It's going to get me through that. It's going to get me through everything. No matter what I get into, it's all in here. Or something like this. If you've got a manual or a complementing manual, really good tools to have in your toolbox. Anyways, that's it for me. Thanks for watching. And uh, back to you, Chris. Keep up the good work. Car is looking great. 1967 Porsche 911. What a beautiful car. That's going to be uh, it's going to be a real sweet ride when you're done with it, Mike. So good luck with that. Next up is Tom. Tom's also got a Porsche 911. I guess I picked good friends here, but Tom's doing. He's a little bit different. He's doing a resto mod, and uh, man, a lot of work, a lot of engineering has gone into this car. So let's see what Tom has to say. So the question was asked by Chris. What's your favorite tool in the shop? So then I thought, how am I going to pick just one tool? So then I thought about something that I use a lot, something that saves me time and energy, makes the job easier, and might even save a little bit of money. So I've made almost 100 videos on YouTube, and I thought about what is in almost every video. Well, it's this table. This is like the home base of my shop. This surface has almost 20 years of wear and tear on it, but it just keeps working. Because my workshop is so small, I put this on wheels. These are steel casters on the bottom. These on this side swivel, and then on this side they don't, but they're also steel casters. One thing I would do differently is probably put locks on this side. So when I am pushing on something really heavy like a vise, then it wouldn't spin. But so if right now when I do put a vise on, I always put it on this side. This little bracket here, I welded on. That's for a, um, either a TIG torch or a MIG gun. But then I have this extra attachment on here. This is for a heat gun. I put this on here because I was making a lot of wire harnesses for a different project, and I needed a place to keep the gun from burning anything and also cooling down on its own. This tube here is for welding rod. This was made from two by two inch square here and then inch and a half going across the sides and some gussets across the back. The tabletop here is about a quarter of an inch, and I got this at the remnants yard. It has flush hardware. Underneath is where I store all my uh, right angle magnets. One important feature about this table is this overhang. This is about two inches and that allows me to clamp stuff on the top. Even though this table was homemade, you might be able to find a kit or a ready-made table that is similar to this. And I highly recommend having something really sturdy, really heavy. It's resistant to all sorts of oils and chemicals, easy to clean. I just take a DA sander and sand it down, wipe it off with some uh, degreaser. It is really important for my shop. All right, next up is Russell from Double R Restorations. Now, Russell, he's a little different. He's a Camaro guy, so we won't hold that against him and keep him in the, in the company of foreign cars. But I tell you what, you want to see a nice, clean, immaculate garage. 
you pay attention to Russell's video here and you'll see just absolute jealous of his garage like nothing else. So take it away, Russell. Hey guys, Russ with Double R Restorations. First, let me just say thank you to Chris for having me on his channel. And today we're talking about specialty tools that help us in our restorations. This one just happens to be mine. And uh, this is an auto twirler parts tree. At least that's what it began its life as. I actually bought it just to help me with some parts, just as a parts hanger. And uh, it's made out of uh, square tubing. It's really rugged. And as you can tell, it holds these door shells of these heavy Camaros really nice. So right now I have this 81 Camaro door just hanging on this parts tree in its original configuration and I will be sandblasting this door shell and getting it in epoxy and the original configuration of the parts tree is going to help me do that however this has been heavily modified into something that I like to call a door dolly like I said I've got it all taped up because we're in the process of getting ready to uh, paint this door but let's look at some older footage anything touching the outside and it beats trying to work with the jack and somebody fumbling bolts or anything trying to install a door. Guys if you want to see the complete build of this door dolly there will be two videos in the description below. Guys once again I just want to say thank you to Chris for having me on his channel. I'm really passionate about restoration work and anything that I can do to help make my life a little bit easier during it I'm all for it. Thank you. All right, thanks a lot, Russell. I can't really imagine how much of a help that is with those big ass heavy doors like that. Obviously, I don't have those problems with Dorothy. So now, let's talk about the tool that I chose. All right, so the tool I chose, is actually two, are my shrinker stretcher. Now, this is a bodywork piece of tool, and what it'll do is it'll help you shrink and stretch metal. So if you've got a flat piece of metal, you can use your stretcher, and it'll make it convex. And if you've got a flat piece of metal and you use your shrinker, it'll make it concave. And what it does is it allows you to make curves and sometimes complex curves in a piece of metal if you're doing a fender or something like that that requires a nice smooth curve. All right, and believe it or not, right now I don't have any metal laying around the shop that I can bend. But I'll give you a close-up here of how the teeth work and how they'll grip the metal and bend it. And I also have some old footage of me using these that I'll throw up here so that you can get an idea of what's going on. The yellow one here, if you can see the arrows, they push outward. And the black one here, the arrows move inward. And right in here, I'll lift up on this handle and you'll see the gap opens up. You could put the piece of metal in there. You go down and you clamp on that piece of metal. Now when I push down on the handle, you're going to see these two blocks move out. And you can see how they spread out as that pressure comes down. Well, that's going to take the metal and stretch it out. And it's going to curve it on the outside, which causes it to flex in on the inside. Now the black one's just the opposite. Again, I lift it all the way up. I can slide the piece of metal in there and go and make contact and you'll see the teeth are open and now it's going to close, which will shrink the metal, drawing it in and making it concave on the inside. So like I said, I'll throw up a little video here and show you just uh, basically how it goes. 
They work pretty easily, not very complicated to use. Unfortunately, the things aren't real cheap. These were about $100, $120 for the pair of them. I did pick them up at Harbor Freight. But again, if you have to make complex curves, I, I can't emphasize enough how much of an easier job these make that and, uh, and, a, and you, get, uh, you can get pretty good with them and make some pretty complex stuff. All right, thanks Mike, Russell, and Tom for sharing your tools with us. I'll put a link in the description to everybody's individual site. I encourage you to go check them out. They're all really, really good. You can learn something from everybody on here. Hey, why don't we come to YouTube, right? So thanks again for watching. You guys have a good rest of your day. Cheers.